This is the second video on my brioche series. We're making brioche fruité. I know I butchered the pronunciation, but that doesn't matter. What it is, is brioche layered with butter. So it's like a puff pastry, but just twice as rich, because the base is brioche dough. Now if you want to see how to make a basic brioche dough, check out my previous video in the brioche series. This video is on how to elaborate the basic dough into this layered brioche. And you will find the full recipe with all the details down in the description box. This dough can be used for many applications. I'll show you a couple in this video. You'll need a cake tin lined with parchment paper. You'll need a piping bag for the filling. A rolling pin. You'll need scales, a dough scraper as always. And you'll need a food processor for this particular recipe. For the ingredients, you'll need some cold butter, some brioche dough, sugar syrup, which is equal parts sugar and water, and some toasted hazelnuts. Making the hazelnut filling super easy. Just blitz your hazelnuts in the food processor. Don't blitz them for too long though, you don't want them to get oily. And once it's blitzed nice and fine, just add them to your sugar syrup and mix them together. This is like a coarse praline paste basically. But the preparation is very easy. Just mix it together, leave it on the side, and it's ready to go. You can put it straight into your piping bag, tie it up, and then we can get on with the rest of the preparations. You can really use any toasted nuts if you like, but I chose hazelnuts this time. Now to laminate the dough, make sure your butter is cold. Place it between parchment paper and press it out. You want it to be kind of a square shape. Try to get it as symmetrical as possible. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect and raise the sharp edges. I mean, if you want it to be a bit more straight, use your scraper like I do here. Just fold in the edges and then straighten it out. You can cover it up with a paper again and just keep on pressing. And now it's kind of square shaped, right? Good enough. Now we can start rolling the dough. So dust your table with flour. You can be quite generous. You don't want your dough to stick to the table. And make sure that both your butter and your dough are the same temperature, so they should be refrigerated beforehand. And I would suggest keeping your butter in the fridge whilst you are rolling your dough. So grab a rolling pin, start rolling. So as before with the butter, you want to try and roll it into a square shape. Place a square of butter in the middle of the dough. You want the points of the butter to be in between the points of the dough. And then fold the corners of the dough in towards the middle of the butter and seal everything up. In hindsight, I could have rolled the dough a little bit smaller so that the butter fits a little bit better in the middle of it. But you know, we're baking at home, so it's no big deal, right? It takes a lot of practice to get this perfect. And what I give you is attainable results. Most importantly, seal in the butter, square the dough up with your hands, and then keep rolling. Now you want to roll it into a long rectangle. Should be around three times the size of the initial dough piece. And now we can perform the first fold, start getting in the layers. Imagine that the dough is in quarters, so fold one quarter over and the other quarter to meet the first quarter and then seal up the middle. Once everything's nice and square, you can fold the dough piece once again over itself. Very simple so far, right? I can square it up again a little bit. We'll cover it with cling film and we'll refrigerate it. Keeping it in the fridge for a while will help relax the gluten because we need to roll this dough once again and fold it once more. Now pop it in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. Now after half an hour of resting, dust your table with flour once more, unwrap your dough while we roll it out again. Now if you look at the dough, it has three open sides these two ends and this one side here, and one closed side. Now you want to roll it in the direction of the two opposite open sides. And instead of rolling, I like to start off with pressing the dough with a rolling pin into a general shape. And now once again, we will roll it into a long rectangle, just as before. First make it a little bit wider, and then turn it 90 degrees again, and keep rolling in the direction of the two open ends. And just as before, with the previous fold, you want to roll the dough until it's about three times the length. And once you're happy with that, you can fold it. 
but this time instead of folding over the quarters, we will fold over a third and then fold over the second third from the other side. Still try and make it as square as possible. This is the last fold that we will perform. What I like to do now is just grab my rolling pin and just press the dough together. Just gently tap it until it's more or less even on all sides. Now once you're happy with that, grab a piece of cling film and wrap it up again. We'll need to refrigerate it for at least one hour. We want the gluten in the dough to relax completely before we roll it out again. And now it's final shaping time. As before, dust your work surface with flour. Make sure your dough is dusted as well. You want to prevent sticking. And we'll grab a rolling pin, start rolling again. And just as before, I like to use a rolling pin just to press the dough along its length to coax it into a general shape. And then continue by rolling. And this time we'll roll it out into a thin square. You want it to be just over half a centimeter thick, about a quarter of an inch. Now in the recipe notes it says use 550 grams of brioche dough. That is half the amount of my basic brioche recipe and you can make two braided loaves out of that. The dough piece I'm using here is slightly smaller, but it doesn't matter, it's still the same method, no matter what size piece you are using. But for demonstration purposes, I'll make a couple of things out of this dough. So I'm gonna trim the edges, I'm gonna use these three pieces for some little buns, and I'm gonna use this one large piece to make the braided loaf. Well, basically what you wanna do is roll your dough out thin, then cut it into three pieces. These will be the separate strands of the braided loaf. Bear in mind that this dough is filled with butter, so handle it as little as possible, because your warm hands may melt it. And now just pipe in your hazelnut filling. Again, the recipe for the filling is for two loaves, so I had some left over. And once you piped in your filling, brush the edge of the dough with some water. This will help seal it up. And now just gently roll over the dough piece so it completely covers the filling and then seal up the edge by pressing it and also seal up the ends you don't want any of the filling to come out just be gentle but firm because you will feel that where you have cut the dough the butter is a little bit sticky so try and work with quick hands so press the dough pieces together and just braid them most of you know how to make a three strand braid but if you don't just watch my hands I also have a video on braided challah, which is a sweet Jewish bread, which you can check out in the link in the top right corner. But once you finish braiding your loaf, just pinch the ends together. And then we'll place it in a cake tin with some parchment paper. And I would strongly suggest using a cake tin because some butter will definitely come out as it's baking. And if you use a tin, that butter will end up back into the dough instead of just spilling out all over the oven. Now with these three cut-off pieces, what I'm gonna do is just some basic buns. Just wrap them around your fingers, and that's it. Easiest shaping ever. This dough is very versatile. You can make some chocolate babka with it, you can make some cinnamon buns, you can make some croissants. But whatever you make, after shaping, wrap them up, leave them to proof for around two hours. During the final hour of proofing, preheat your oven, 180 degrees C, no fan, and then watch those babies rise. They should definitely double in size. I'm gonna refrigerate the buns so they don't overproof whilst I'm baking the braided loaf. As you can see, the ends have unraveled a little bit, so I'm using wet hands just to pinch them together, but it's no big deal. One last step before baking is to brush them with egg. You can use whole egg, or you can use egg yolk for an even more richer crust. Now it's ready for the oven. We'll bake the loaf for around 35 minutes. It should rise considerably now. And that's your braided brioche loaf. Now this last step is optional, but it will really give it a shiny, beautiful crust. I brush them with a little bit of apricot jam that's been let down with a little splash of water. You could also brush it with a little bit of butter. Now leave the loaf in the tin for at least half an hour. In that time, you can make whatever else you're making. The buns get the same treatment, a little brush of egg, and in the oven they go. And once they come out, brush them with the apricot again. 
and that's a layered brioche. It's not the easiest thing to make, but it's definitely rewarding. And the braided loaf is really something else. And when it comes to little buns, what you can do is let them cool down a little bit and then fill them with the rest of the filling if you decide to go the way I did. But as always, any questions or suggestions, write them down in comments, subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.